Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lemire Carter. Today we're going to be tackling another Pico CTF challenge titled Pi Time. Now, first thing you want to do is log into your Pico CTF account and you can look up or you can search for Pi Time by either searching for it by name in the search bar here or if it pops up on your dashboard, you can just go ahead and click on it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Pi Time and I already launched the instance, uh, but if you haven't already launched it, there'll probably be like a blue button here that'll say launch the instance, all right? So let's read the description. Can you try to get the flag? Beware, we have Pi, right? Uh, connect to the program with Netcat. This is Netcat here. The program source code can be downloaded here. The binary can be downloaded here, all right? So first, Pi. I wanna go into what Pi is. And in simple terms, Pi, which is short for position independent executable means the program starting memory location changes every time you run it. So normally a program might always start at address, we'll say something like this here on the screen, zero X, right? If you want to attack it, you know exactly where everything is and attackers target RAM because that's where they can overwrite variables or return addresses. They can even inject malicious code or force it to call a dangerous function. But with Pi, it's like the program moves to a random spot each time. So maybe one time it's this number or maybe it's a different number like this number here, right? So the attacker doesn't know where in the RAM the program starts. All right, and that's basically what Pi is. Now, go ahead and start the instance if you haven't already. Then go on over to where it says uh, source code can be downloaded here, and you're gonna wanna right click that and you'll get a drop down. In the drop down, go ahead and click copy link address. All right, so that'll be copied. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go into the web shell. And our goal is, to, of course, is to find the Pico CTF flag within all of this. So let's go ahead and we'll start by using the w git command. So type w git and then pasting the source code in the web shell, right? So we'll paste it. So you'll right click and then paste this plain text and then go ahead and hit enter. Now the w git command line is used to download files from the internet. All right, now once you've successfully downloaded the file, you're gonna want to type in ls, right? In order to list the uh, the directory that you're currently in, we should see vuln, right? And what we want is vuln.c. And as you guys can see here on the screen, I've already been playing with PyTime a bit because I have duplicate files and things of that nature. So next we're gonna type in the cat command, which will basically allow us to display the vuln.c file contents. So type in cat space and then vuln.c. Now what we're seeing is the main address and this is showing us the memory address where the main function is currently loaded. Uh, because pi is enabled, this address will change every time the program runs. And now as for the address to jump to, the program is asking us to input a memory address and it will try to jump or redirect execution to that address, right? So think of it like, where should I go next in code? Now, before we continue, you guys, there are different ways to solve Python, but I found that this way that I'm gonna show you in this video is what works for me. And maybe it'll work for you, all right? So let's continue. So the next thing you wanna type in is nm space vuln space, pipe character, space, space, grep. And then you want to space again and type in main, another pipe character, win, all right? So type that in, what you see on the screen here. And to kind of break down what this is, so the nm command lists symbols from object files. And in this context here, right, what we see on the screen, vuln is our compiled binary. So the output, it'll display a list of symbols. 
basically functions and variables and things of that nature, along with their memory addresses and type, right? And then with the pipe character and grep and everything that comes after that, this part filters the output of the NM vuln to show only lines containing the main or win, okay, uh, addresses. So when we type this in and we hit enter, we should get our main address and our win address, right? So this is what uh, this is what we this is what we want to see, right? So we have our main and we have our win, and the main address is the location in memory or RAM where the main function of our program starts running, right? So I guess we could think of main like the front door of your program. It's the very first place the computer walks into when it runs your code. And as far as the win function, it's like a secret room in your program that gives you a prize, which in our case is the Pico CTF flag. But we have to know its exact location to jump there. So now we need to do some math. So let's head on over to our hex calculator, right? And you can find this on calculator.net. Um, I just Googled it in and it brought me to this page here. So what we want to do is we want to take our our main address here, right? So we can copy that and then paste it in here. And then we'll take the address of our win and we will copy that. And we'll come back to the hex calculator and then we'll paste it here. And then what we'll do is we will subtract it. And then once we do that, we'll go ahead and hit calculate. All right. And it'll spit out a hex value of 96. Right. So this is the number that we need to take. So 96, this hexadecimal is the distance in memory between the main function and the one function. So the one function is located 96 bytes or 150 decimal before the main function. OK, so now that we know that, let's head on over back to our Pico CTF challenge and also uh, take note if this needs to be launched again because sometimes it'll uh, time out on its own let's highlight this netcat or make sure you copy from the nc all the way down to the last number and not the money sign so copy that and then come back to your web shell and then what we want to do is paste that netcat into the web shell hit enter once we paste the netcat into the web shell and hit enter we'll get this address here and then what we want to do is we want to copy this and head back to our hex calculator. So keep in mind, you guys, that this calculator does not accept the 0x prefix. So when you're copying, be sure to leave that part uh, of the address out and only have um, the numbers and letters after that. OK, uh, so, you know, it's a learning experience. It's fine. But everything else is okay all right so let's go ahead and calculate that and now we get this hex decimal here starting with 63 ff let's go ahead and copy that and go back on over to our pico ctf challenge now back in our web show what we want to do is again right click and paste as plain text and then we'll hit enter and we should see the win function right and it'll say uh you won pico ctf and the output with the flag let's try that again pico ctf ah that's what it was okay but yeah you guys so we just completed the pi time challenge here on pico ctf i hope you enjoyed this video if you find value in my content and you like to support my channel head on over to coffee whether you donate a dollar or two dollars your contribution is greatly appreciated all right, with that said, I will see you all on the next video. Take care.